This video will introduce and explain the determinants of price elasticity of demand, the determinants of PED. So, we've learnt at a previous lesson that um, demand, price elasticity of demand, demand can be price elastic or price inelastic. But what determines whether a product will have price elastic or price inelastic demand? What factors determine whether the consumers of a product will be very sensitive to changes in price and thus have price elastic demand, or whether those consumers won't be sensitive to changes in price and thus have price inelastic demand? Let's have a look and see. The first determinant of price elasticity of demand is the number and closeness of substitutes. Generally, if a product has less close substitutes, so it doesn't have that many substitutes, this will mean that the consumers, because they don't have that much choice, they generally will still buy the product even if price rises a little bit. And thus, demand in that case will be less elastic, or in other words, more inelastic. But if a product has more close substitutes and consumers have lots of choice, their demand is likely to be more sensitive to changes in price because if one product's price rises, consumers can switch to a close substitute and thus the demand will be more elastic and less inelastic. So let's have a look. For example, food. Food as a commodity doesn't really have any substitutes really. So the demand for food in general will be quite price inelastic. However, if you compare that to the demand for a very specific type of food, McDonald's chicken nuggets, for example. Now, that's a very specific type of food. McDonald's chicken nuggets, as a food item, have lots of close substitutes. Okay, So the demand for McDonald's chicken nuggets is likely to be more elastic or less inelastic. Okay, um, Let's have a look at cigarettes as well. Cigarettes in general... Um, are likely to be, the demand is likely to be quite inelastic when compared to a specific brand, the Marlboro brand cigarettes, because there are lots of substitutes, lots of choices that consumers have or options, um, the demand for Marlboro brands is likely to be more elastic because there are more close substitutes. The second determinant of price elasticity of demand is the proportion of income that consumers spend on the product. Generally, if a product takes up a high proportion of a consumer's income, that consumer's demand is likely to be quite sensitive to price because the product is already expensive. So any changes in price, the consumer will be a lot more responsive. So the demand will be more elastic and less inelastic. But if a product takes a lower proportion of income, it's quite cheap, um, it doesn't really take up much of the consumer's income, the demand is likely to be more inelastic and less elastic. Let's compare meat and salt, for example. When you compare these two products, meat generally takes a much higher proportion of income than salt. Salt is quite cheap. So the consumers of both products are likely to be more sensitive to changes in the price of meat than they are to changes in the price of salt. Similarly, the prices of flights for holidays, these, when you budget for your holiday, they eat up a big proportion of your budget for the holiday. So your demand is likely to be more elastic for holiday flights. And that's why um, holiday companies and airlines would advertise in holiday season that they have discounts and so on because they know that consumers are responsive to this drop in price, the quantity demanded will increase at a much higher proportion. But, for example, if you're someone like me, I like to collect holiday postcards. Um, I don't really think about the prices of postcards when I'm on holiday because they're usually quite, uh, they're usually quite cheap. The price is, is really not, doesn't really take up a big proportion of my holiday budget. So my demand for holiday postcard prices is likely to be more inelastic or less elastic. And this brings us to the third determinant of price elasticity of demand, is basically the degree of necessity. If the product is really, really necessary and the consumer needs that product, 
they're generally not going to care about the price. Their demand will be quite inelastic and less elastic. But if the product is a luxury for that consumer, their demand will be a lot more sensitive to price. It will be more elastic and less inelastic. Now remember, whether something is a necessity or a luxury um, is not really characteristic of the product itself. It depends on the consumer. So if you compare, for example, insulin medication for a diabetic, someone who has diabetes and requires regular insulin medication, um, it's quite irrelevant uh, what the price is because they need this um, medication. So their demand is likely to be uh, very inelastic because for this um, consumer, uh, insulin medication is a necessity. Um, versus, of course, if you're someone like me who likes to collect all the latest gadgets, the new iPad Pro... Um, is a luxury. Um, it, it's not really something I need, although I can lie to myself and convince myself that I need it. But no, it is a luxury. So my demand is likely to be a lot more elastic. Um, and the same applies for, for products in general. So the, the more necessary, the more of a necessity the product is, the less elastic, the more inelastic the demand will be. Um, and the more of a luxury the product is, the more elastic the demand will be will be and the more sensitive the demand will be to changes in price. And this brings us to our last determinant of price elasticity of demand, time. Basically, consumers take time to adjust their spending habits. Okay, we don't, um, when there is a rise in price and there's a product that we uh, buy regularly, we don't adjust and stop buying it immediately. Consumers take time. Markets take time to respond. So generally, in the short run, demand is quite price uh, inelastic in the short run. Uh, it's, it's less price elastic in the short run because um, consumers don't really have that much time to adjust. So say, for example, I've got a dinner party tomorrow and I'm used to buying a specific brand of hot sauce. And I walk into the store and I realize that this hot sauce, the price has doubled. I'm like, oh my God, I've got a dinner party tomorrow. Because I've tried and tested that hot sauce um, and I know it really well, I'm unlikely to look for a substitute there and then because I don't have that much time to adjust. So my demand is likely to be quite inelastic in this situation. But in the long run, because consumers take time and after some time they adjust their spending habits, demand in the long run tends to become more elastic or less inelastic. Uh, so the same kind of story, but let's assume I have my dinner party in four weeks and I find out that the price of my favorite hot sauce has doubled. That gives me four whole weeks to, to, to look for substitutes and to try them. So generally, in the long run, uh, demand becomes more price elastic or less inelastic.